and since I'm going to start digging out all my GPS units from under the bench, I figured I might as well run a battery calibration on my own main GPS since the batteries are back there and I've pretty much been unable to get at them for a couple of years. So I've got my meter hooked up and my very trusty ancient Dell laptop hooked up via serial cable to the UPS and I've hooked up a big lamp to it to put a load on it and if we take a look here the UPS was made in 2006 and I changed the batteries I got these two car batteries in 2009 and I've used this handy little hack and I've told it that it's got two external battery packs installed and let's see we've got the load percentage is 63% and the run time is 102 minutes which is quite a bit more than the original batteries would give us anyway that battery has been these UPSs have a function to essentially count with well leveling so the battery constant changes with time even if you don't run a battery calibration so I'm suspecting that this UPS has overcompensated because I would think that I would get more runtime out of these batteries so I'm just going to use apctest.exe and run a battery calibration while I'm doing other stuff around the shop so battery runtime calibration press 2 let's see if it works Do you want me to stop if the battery goes too low? Hell no. There we go. Now the battery voltage is dropping quite fast, but uh, this is actually normal for electricity batteries and in a few minutes the voltage is probably going to start rising up again once they've started to get used to the load. There we go. Getting right back up. I'm not entirely sure why this happens, but pretty much all the acid batteries that are left to just lie for a while would do this. And you can essentially get over a volt back. And you can keep on going up for half an hour really, depending on the load. So I'm gonna let this thing run power my 600 watt, well 500 watt work lamp and we'll see what kind of battery state we get to on this thing when it's done. Well, I'll talk about disappointment. <laughs> These batteries don't seem to be in quite as good shape as I had hoped for. It ran for about 10 minutes and then it figured nope I'm gonna quit the self test for battery voltage dropped to about 11 volts during that time oh dear it seems I've got some work to do with these batteries because I think they've gotten a bit lazy over the years but maybe we can do something about that okay so what I'm gonna start by doing is give them just a couple of cycles at fairly low load in order to essentially wake them up a bit and I'm going to give them a good shake to mix the electrolyte up and just uh, try and get a bit of life in them give them a bit of exercise and if that doesn't do anything then I'm going to try and hook up my desulfator oh there we go I just gave these batteries a big shake, just shaking them all, all over the shop in order to mix the electrolyte up and <laughs> our loaded voltage with just my computer and some stuff went up by about 0.4 volts from just doing that. So it seems the electrolyte had gotten a bit uneven inside of them. So that's a good sign. Now I've just got to cycle them. 28 volts. Forty amps. I have to admit, I wanted to try this thing. 
So this seems to do its job. I'm going to over charge these batteries to about 15 volts to give them a bit of a kick. So after that rough treatment I've taken to giving these batteries a very long slow charge which took about 14 hours and they didn't want to drop below about 0.7 amps ever so that's kind of concerning but I'm going to give them a couple of slow nice cycles using this call amp over here which draws about 8.5 amps and they've been going for about an hour so that's the voltage we're getting which is pretty okay we're at least know that they can <laughs> provide about 8.5 amp hours by now since they've been running for an hour or so so I'm just going to leave these here it's hopefully going to take a long time coming up, coming up at 2 hours, still going strong so we've drawn about 17 amp hours out of these maybe they're supposed to be 100 together so yeah. and there we go, we're about 5 hours in well, five and a half, and we're down to about nine volts. Still with the load connected, so we aren't entirely empty yet. But I'd say these batteries could do with some charging now. So I'm just going to hook up my normal seven amp charger and let them slowly charge back up. Bring them off. We've drawn about 50 amp hours out of them, which uh, since it's over such a short amount of time, that's actually a fairly good value because batteries are usually specified over a 20 hour period, so in a less than 20 hours of discharge time and they can have less capacity. So, with a bit of luck, these can still be saved. Well, there we go, I just disconnected the load a minute ago and the battery voltage is slowly climbing up a bit but these batteries are pretty deeply discharged but I'm going to let them settle for just a few minutes, maybe half an hour and uh, see how far we get the voltage back up it should, well, go up quite a bit still I'd expect somewhere around 10.5 or 11 volts and there we go, charging slowly at 7 amps another day, another battery problem this has been left to charge overnight Fourteen and a half volts. About what's that? One amp. Half an amp of battery. Suppose that could be worse. So, can we give them another cycle and see if we get more than fifty amp hours out of them? There we go. I'll let them rest for about an hour now, and. It's time to hook up the load. I think we have a slightly higher OCV now than they did when I did this last time, so that's a good thing. So, left a bit light. Poof, there we go. Now we're just going to have to sit for another few hours. Now I'm going to put my horrible old Samsung smartphone to time them again. Alright, we're about five hours in again and we're seeing pretty much the same results. If I were to let these run for five and a half, we'd probably be down to right around nine volts again, but I'm not gonna do that because since we're practically seeing the exact same discharge curve, I'd be keeping an eye on them. I don't think we're gonna get any more capacity out of them by cycling them. So load off and let's see what OCV, OCV we get if I could get my frame out nine on nine ten volts ten oh five yeah pretty much exactly the same as before but at least they've been exercised a bit. So I'm going to charge them back up and then I'll hook them back up to my UPS and see if they perform any better than last time. And there we go. I'm using two chargers this time to 
speed the process up a bit. And since I've got lots of cheap multimeters, why not use them? Although I should note that even though these two read very differently, even if I probe the exact same spot, they aren't the same. And if you really don't believe me, I'm going to take both probes. There you go. Negative, positive. There you go. 0.3 volts of difference. Oh well. Better than no monitoring. Well, something really weird has happened tonight because I came up and my computer won't turn on. And it didn't take many seconds to figure out if the UPS was turned off. And well, it has no battery, so it's probably not going to turn on again. But why it's turned off is beyond me. There hasn't been any power failure that I'm aware of, and my clock upstairs, which doesn't have a battery backup, hadn't lost time. So, this thing must have just died. Oh well. I've got my batteries now. I just took them off the charger. They've been sitting for maybe 16 hours. So let's see what we have. 13.83. 89. Nice. They've been resting for just a couple of minutes, but that's a pretty nice ACV. Gotta get these installed after they get to rest for a little while. Okay, and as the time for reinstalling the batteries in my UPS comes closer, I'm gonna give this battery cable a bit of oversight. I made this cable by just cutting up a set of starter cables and then uh, I did something wrong, I can't remember what, and I had to put it back together again. And if I started a bit too long, it needed to be back then, but it doesn't need to be anymore. And I don't know, these crimped connections look kind of dodgy. I don't think it's showing off on camera too well, but it's kind of oxidized. So I'm gonna recrimp this cable just on the other side of a clamp and uh, probably cut it down to size. Maybe make it about 50, 60, 70 centimeters long rather than well over a meter and just going to give this a quick check. I don't think I'm going to redo this connection maybe uh, recut the wire if that. So looking at these cables it, it's pretty apparent that they are of horrible horrible quality. We can see how they've oxidized on the inside of the cable which isn't really that big of a problem, but due to that I have decided to clean these up quite a bit and to actually solder the cables in place after I crimp them because I wouldn't want any oxidation to occur in the crimp after it's been crimped which would increase the resistance of the connection. So that's what we're going to do. Got a strong soldering station for a reason. There we go. Nice and shiny. That's not going anywhere. Also, if you're going to do this, don't forget these. <laughs> 